Okay, do you see my screen? Uh, I need to make it a little bit smaller so you can have a good resolution on uh, your computers. Uh, so do you see my screen right now? Because sometimes it's not uh, showing it right. Yes, good. Uh, so uh, the question was to add a new class named all connected components in the package uh, graph undirected uh, uh, connected components. So you need to go here in, in this package and uh, add uh, uh, a new class name all connected uh, components. Now here uh, uh, I will have uh, two methods. So this uh, I also put uh, uh, DFS from devs for search, but you don't need to. You can put the name as it's in the uh, requirement. And uh, basically that's what the class will look like when it's uh, first time uh, connected. Uh, let me see why it doesn't allow me to close it. Uh, I don't know why. But it will be just a top with a class and without containing anything. Now, uh, <clears throat> uh, what? Okay, let me try to make space. Okay, now if we if we look at the code, uh, that's uh, that's what we'll need to have. First of all, in this class, you need to put an undirected graph because you want to do all the computations related to computing the connected uh, components. Uh, and uh, uh, you, you will have uh, the your, your array that will mark an index for each connected component. So each connected component will be marked with a given uh, number. That's, uh, that's how it uh, can be done. Uh, then I will keep the number of connected components that will be basically uh, the length, the size of this marked uh, array, how much I use from it. And uh, I will have for each connected component its size. Now let's see the code, what is doing. And uh, it's very similar with uh, computing one connected component. So it's reusing the same uh, structure. We just added a few more uh, things here. So first of all, I receive the graph for which I want to do the computation with my initial graph. And then the marked array will have the same size is uh, the number of vertices in the graph because if you remember when you when we computed one connected component we needed to mark in the marked array all the visited uh, uh, vertices so we'll use for the same reason here the marked array but we'll use it to mark all connected components and then i will mark first the array with minus one and uh, why I use minus one? Because zero, it's uh, it's one of the vertices. One of the, the first vertices, it's uh, marked with zero by convention. So I need to mark here uh, with minus one because I need to indicate that I don't uh, have any component computed yet for that particular node. And uh, so minus one means it's not visited. I never went through that uh, node. Now, I will also initialize a number of connected components is zero and the maximum <clears throat> number of uh, uh, connected components will be the number of vertices because if they are only vertices, no edge, just isolated vertices, then this will generate like uh, um, V uh, connected components, each of them being a single vertex. So that's why we initialize here with the maximum possible. And uh, sure, the size, as we'll add, it will be uh, kind of uh, initialized with uh, uh, zero initially, but it will become uh, 
how many compo how many vertices I put in the component. Now, what I do, I will go through all my vertices and see, have I computed, is this vertex already part of a connected component? And uh, if it's part, it will be marked with something from zero to V minus one. So it will not be minus one. Remember that I initialized this with minus one. So here I already, if, uh, if this uh, vertex was already in a connected component, it will be marked with something that is not uh, minus one. So uh, that's why I, having it minus one means I never visited. I need to compute now a new connected component for this uh, vertex I. So my current vertex is uh, I. And uh, sure, as I compute a new one, I increment the number of uh, connected uh, components. And uh, now I keep the information about this connected component on uh, uh, it's always a size minus one. So this is the last element and it will be uh, initialized with zero. And then what I do, <clears throat> I apply a modified depth first search for this vertex size. So what I do, I do this depth first search to try to compute a new connected component starting from I. And uh, this is very similar with uh, procedures that we had before. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> just that now I have multiple connected components. So all the operations, so here before I had the count, now instead of count, I have, uh, I know that this is, uh, this is this specific connected component. So we need to increment the size of it. And uh, also here I have, uh, uh, I mark the current visited node with, the connected uh, component index. Now uh, you can also send this as a parameter if you really want to, and it will uh, simplify a little bit the code, but uh, this global variable is good as well. Uh, next will be to have a four for all the connection starting from this VI. And uh, so my vertex I. So what I am looking here to take all adjacent uh, vertices and for each of them if it's not yet marked and can be marked as belonging to this connected component uh, or uh, cannot be marked at all why because if belong to a previous connected component my algorithm must also uh, mark the current node so uh, that's uh, that's how it works. So either it's it's marked uh, with uh, uh, the adjacent array, either is marked with my current value or it's minus one. Uh, but that's why I can just test with minus one. And if it's uh, minus one means it's not visited, I need to go there. If it's different from minus one, then it will have this value. Uh, that I put also for this node. So cannot be, it must be visited in this, uh, uh, in this current connected component. So, uh, and I apply recursively the depth for search. So this is, this is a traditional depth for search, a little bit modified to go through all these, uh, all these elements. Now, uh, uh, what we'll add here, you will need to, you, you will have a few methods, for instance, graph is connected and uh, these <clears throat> will, uh, will happen if I have a single connected component. So number of connected components, it's one, means starting from uh, vertex zero, I, go, I went through all the other vertices. So basically I have a connected graph, I have a single connected component. This is uh, the logic of uh, this return. Now, the number of connected components is uh, this one uh, that I keep in this variable. Uh, and uh, uh, if I want the size of a given connected component, uh, first I check the index. And uh, here is just to check the input. It's a good technique for public method. And uh, if the index is less than zero or is greater than the last connected components, I will say invalid index for a connected component. 
If not, I'll return the size that I computed. So this will just guarantee me that I check the input, it's a valid uh, input. Now, the, the last thing that I want is to get uh, an array with all the values in my connected component. So if I want a component, I, I want the array only with the values in a given component, I will need to provide the index of that component, ensure how many values I have here, I will have the number, the size of that particular connected uh, component. So I know the size, I keep the size. So I will just use that one to uh, initialize the size of my new array of integers. And then what I will do, I will go through all uh, these uh, um, <clears throat> So I will go with uh, connect. Uh, so I will have two indexes here. I will have an index VI that will go through all the vertices. And I will also have a, uh, an index CI that will go through the component. So as I find vertices in this component, I will add them. So VI will go through all the vertices from zero. You see zero, I start with zero. I compare with the number of vertices and I increment it to step. So my main cycle is on the VI that goes through all these components. But I also have a cycle through CI that will go for, for this array component. And CI will go index by index when I find an element in the component will increment this index to belong to the component. So uh, as you can see here, if uh, I start with CI zero, and if my current vertex is marked with this index, so it belongs to this connected component, then I will, uh, uh, put the value in the component in the result corresponding to the current index and I increment then the index equal with the index of this uh, vertex. So basically here I accumulate all the elements, all the indexes for the uh, <clears throat> uh, for these particular connected components. How long it will take? I need to go through all the vertices. So it will take uh, a linear time to, to do that because I need to visit all the vertices. Okay, so these are uh, the, uh, this is a code to create the uh, connected components. And then uh, here it's a short test that basically reads a file, uh, then uh, creates uh, <clears throat> uh, creates these all component. Uh, so uh, this is initialize the graph, then creates uh, the class for all connected components, and then it's printing uh, a list with all connected uh, components. So let's start with the uh, uh, first test. And uh, so you will see how this runs. Uh, and you can see here, this is a tiny graph with uh, three connected components and you will have component zero and contains the numbers from zero to six. And remember we have seven, eight, the other connected components, just a line. And then we have four vertices uh, that are linked between them, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now here, the connected components are nicely numbered, but this is not a requirement. So uh, this work fine and you determine all these connected components, but uh, let's see how uh, the next one will, uh, will work. And uh, as you can see here, <clears throat> this is a graph, it's a bigger graph. It has 250 nodes. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many vertices, but they are a lot. And it has a single connected component. So uh, basically all these vertices are linked between them, but solve decently fast. So that's not, uh, that's not a problem. Now the large one, I think this is the large one. Uh, yes, uh, it will take uh, longer to uh, process. And I don't remember how many connected components. I know that it will stay a lot to print uh, the stuff. So if we run this one, we'll need to wait for, uh, for the results and I will lose 
part of the result because my console, you, you can increase the size of the console and you will need to do that. So now loaded, now it's preparing the output for printing. So uh, that's, and it stays a lot to prepare because it's a huge graph as you saw. So uh, uh, you, you may want, if you do that, you may want to decide to comment the print of the graph and see only the corresponding connecting components because it will be uh, simpler. But uh, this, this is a huge uh, graph. Okay, does this clarify your question? If not, uh, I, I will wait here to see if we get it. You may not get it and that's fine. So it's a huge graph and mostly if we keep the print, you will not, uh, uh, you may not get the result and that's fine. So if you wait, you may say, I waited five minutes for the result, was not printed, uh, graph too big and that's fine. You may not put the execution uh, in that case. So you will not get uh, points uh, lost for this one. But, uh, uh, and again, this is generated by this huge, uh, huge uh, arrays to be printed. So what I do sometimes, um, and uh, it's okay to do that, uh, you may decide, okay, I will stop this one. And I will comment here, this graph to string, because uh, this, uh, it's a huge graph and takes a lot of time to generate. And uh, let's see, uh what this will do and i don't know if it, even the connected components i don't remember exactly what the distribution was but uh, it might be too big uh yeah so it, probably i have an out of uh, uh, stack overflow error so it's too big so what we can do uh, we can instead uh, and uh, again i will do here uh, let's copy this one and i will do a test two here that will not print the graph if it's too big, it will print it only if it's under a given size. So, uh, and this is how you need to actually do the test to take this in, in consideration. So uh, here I will put if, uh, uh, let's say graph, and I know that this medium one has 250, I will say if, um, uh, let's put a number of edges, I will have graph that uh, uh, num get number of edges is less than um, 1000. Uh, then I will print the graph. Uh, and else I can print something else. I can print just a, just a, uh, a message that will tell me uh, graph too big and I'll put vertices equal and let me put here graph punct get get number of uh, vertices and then I will add uh, edges equal and I will put graph get number number of edges. So uh, so this will be like uh, uh, an, an alternative way uh, not to print graphs that are too big. Now for connected components um, uh, I will change a little bit here and I'll say number of connected components and I will add uh, how many I, deter uh, I determine. So I'll have all CC uh, get number of connected components. So first I will write how many they are. And then when I want to print a connected components, if it's too big, I will uh, also not print it. So uh, I, you know, if again, if it's over 1000 elements, I will not uh, print it. So uh, then what I need to do here, I, uh, I will have it like if uh, all CC 
get size, get uh, get connected component size, and uh, here I have CCI is uh, less than less or equal to now thousand. So if it's a decent sized connected component, then I will uh, print uh, this connected component. If it's not, uh, then I will just print again the characteristics uh, of uh, of it. So instead of printing uh, everything here, I will print only, uh, uh, let's put like uh, uh, size, and uh, what size it uh, it has. Uh, so I'll take this value that is a size, how many elements are in the connected components. So you see here, I, I am redoing this method just to have a better way to test uh, a, a huge tree, a, a huge graph. So uh, let's uh, try now and uh, see what we got from uh, from our test. So I will close this one and run again. And again, we need to wait. It's uh, just loading the, the elements. It's taking some time, as you saw. So uh, we 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 uh, that's unavoidable. Uh, okay. Oops. Still problems. Let me see what I got here. Uh, exception uh, stack overflow. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so even for computing, so you see, I have graph too big, 1 million vertices, 7 million edges. Even for computing the number of connected components, it's uh, that I don't have enough stack to, to do it. So what you can do and uh, what you must do in this case, is to increase the stack, uh, and I will need to look. It's a system parameter when you run. Um, let me search. Uh, I don't know the parameter on hard. But uh, I know how to set it, just one second. Um, I think it's this one. So I'm going now on my... Uh, uh, execution on the test. And if I uh, click here and uh, give uh, run configurations, uh, do you see the run configuration file? Uh, do you see the pop-up window with the run configuration? Hello? Anybody? Okay, so um, uh, let me stop the share and try a new share. So it's important to see, okay, yeah, I think this is, now I hope you see it. So if you right click and give run configurations, that's what will appear or something similar depending on the versions that uh, you have. And here you have uh, uh, arguments. And here, for instance, it's putting 1 million uh, and I can put uh, bigger than the two millions or uh, uh, how how much I want the size to be. And uh, this is a big size. So let's see now uh, if uh, and I put to I put the system to run the window closed. Uh, so I will need to uh, share again the main Eclipse window uh, and. Uh, Okay, so uh, probably it was not uh, enough. I still get the stack overflow. Uh, uh, yeah, I will try more. The problem with depth for search is that it's recursive and uh, I have 1 million vertices. Uh, 
uh, I put two million, but it's still low because if it's a big component, like I, I don't know if it's all connected or not, but if it's a big component, I will go through almost all the, the nodes and each of them will occupy something. So two million, it's too little. So what I will do now, I will uh, change these and uh, you, I will not change it for you to see, but I will put like 10 million. And uh, uh, I will run again to see if this 10 million will uh, be good enough. Maybe, maybe not, uh, uh, not. Uh, so this seems to be like very few components. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll do more. Not a problem. Uh, it's a trial and error. I don't know the value. Probably I played with this uh, some time ago, but right now um, I don't know what I use here. Uh, I generally I have much bigger values for for my applications and uh, like two fifty six millions or mega. Uh, so, uh, so I, I, I have very large value in my setup. Yeah, this worked. And uh, as you see, as I guess, it's only one connected component. So uh, uh, the size at work uh, uh, was, uh, uh, let me see. So let me see, it's uh, 100 mega. So let me copy and uh, uh, what I will do now, I will uh, mark in uh, in here uh, that, uh, yeah, and basically I ask you to do only tiny and medium graphs above. So I didn't ask you for the large graph. Uh, so uh, you will be fine, uh, but, uh, uh, I will put a note so at least people will know if they want to run the large file. Uh, so this will be uh, if you want to run the large file you need to set uh, the VM argument in the run configuration to, uh, to a big value like, uh, and I put here the setup. Uh, okay, so I modify, so, whoever wants to, to have that information there. But I didn't ask you just because I knew that it's, uh, it's uh, not uh, easy to, to do it. Um, okay, so uh, I answer this part. Any, any other question? We can have the discussion. Uh, and we have this question, is our representation efficient for computing the connected components? And uh, I ask you to explain your answer. Uh, and uh, this is uh, related to representation. So it's not related to the algorithm. I am just asking if our representation is uh, efficient. And keep in mind that to use here, we have undirected graph with adjacency lists. So that's the kind of, uh, of representation we use. And uh, let's uh, have this one. So this will be like week 10, uh, session two, query one. And uh, uh, let's discuss uh, this, uh, this point. So uh, this is 45. Uh, step 45, if the representation is uh, efficient. And uh, 
Let's start with a very easy question. Just tell me your opinion, yes or no. So do I, just a yes, no answer if it's efficient uh, or not. Uh, and I got a an yes and I got a, a, a no. So uh, good variety, at least one answer is correct. Now let's uh, discuss uh, uh, what, uh, let's take some steps toward the answer and I will not tell yet what is, which is the answer. So what is the operation that uh, I am doing uh, in, uh, on, on the graph? What kind of calls I am performing on, uh, on the graph in my uh, uh, code. So uh, how I am accessing the graph in the code, that's, uh, that's the best way to put it. Uh, uh, so no I'm, no, I'm not talking from where I take the graph, how I initialize the graph. I'm talking about my all connecting DFS, which is basically this method what graph operations is performing. So uh, uh, looking at the graph, what my recursive method it's using, what operation it's using uh, for uh, from the graph. Uh, Okay, give me what you have. <clears throat> so basically it's only one main call in, in this uh, recursive method is the one that it's uh, requesting all the adjacency indexes. So basically it's uh, this call here. And uh, uh, if uh, we look, it's uh, this is a uh, interface, but if I'm looking at the implementation of it, uh, let's search for it, get, uh, I need to see, get uh, adjacency vertices index. I have an iterator, but I think I don't call the iterator. Uh, I just call the indexes array. It's this one. So basically, it's this method here that will return an array with all the adjacency list uh, elements. Sure, I can. Uh, this one is just makes a copy of uh, uh, the uh, the adjacency list that I keep. So it's pretty vast. It's creating a, a, a copy. I need to create a copy because I don't want uh, the caller to be able to modify it, but it's just copying the adjacency list. So it's it's a pretty fast method. Uh, can be a little bit improved. Yes, but I, as a representation here, I just uh, know for this particular index, I know immediately which is a degree because I access one element in a vector. And then for Z index, I just copy element by element all the elements in the result. So I cannot see a faster um, implementation. Only if we keep an immutable array and we send Z1, then might be a little bit faster, but we'll have a lot of overhead to create all those classes. So. So as implementation, I don't see anything that we can improve in the representation. So I'm talking about the representation here. So it seems like a fairly fast uh, uh, implementation. Now, uh, this is how you think about representation. Uh, Now, we also have the next question, 
which is a step forty six which is a little bit different, but what we did here will help with that answer. So here you are asked uh, if we can improve the efficiency of the algorithm. And uh, the main idea here is that again, in uh, all connected uh, components, when, uh, when I am looking at the method, <clears throat> the main problems that we had, and you saw this in a, in a big graph, is that to use, uh, we needed to use a recursive method. And this recursivity will generate a lot of work on the stack. So uh, we are slow because we need to work a lot on the stack. So the answer will be, oh yes, because uh, how we can improve it if we get rid of the stack somehow. But uh, at this point, you don't know how because you, you are just in uh, 2.212. So you didn't learn yet about breath first. So uh, what you can say here is at most, okay, uh, to improve it. Yeah, it's slow and the main problem seems to be the recursive calls. And we know that by sure because we had the problem with the big three with the recursive calls. So how we can improve it if we can get rid of the recursive calls. But again, I'm not asking you to, to put a new method here to write the code. It's just the idea. You need to realize, okay, the recursivity, it's a problem if we can get rid of it it will be uh, better. And when you go to the next uh, next step, uh, which will be the uh, uh, breads first, I don't know if I am asking, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, I here you compare, not you don't compare all connected for uh, uh, you compare the shortest path, but uh, uh, both of them. Uh, let me see if I don't have. Uh, yeah, so I don't have all connected done with breads first. Uh, as a requirement. But if you will do all connected with breaths first, that will be like the fastest way to do it. And you will see that these trees that took us a while to get printed, doing it with breaths first will go much, much faster. Uh, okay, does uh, this clarify your question? Hello? Uh, 